Hello and welcome back to another GCSE revision video. Now guys, what we want to do within this lesson is to go over how to craft a perfect grade nine response on the theme of class. If that is the question that comes up in your inspector calls GCSE exams that take place in exactly three weeks from today. Why have I chosen the theme of class? Guys, I've chosen the theme of class because in the predictions videos that myself and Mr. Sally's will be releasing next week, my prediction, plot spoiler, is when it comes to inspector calls, I strongly believe that the theme of class is going to be one of the questions that's going to be presented to you guys to answer in this year's exams, okay? And when you watch that prediction video next week, you will see how we go over all of the questions. And of course, not only will you see why I believe class is going to come up as one of your chosen questions, but also I talk about and discuss how to answer different themes and different questions if class doesn't come up, right? So say if gender and so on comes up. But I personally strongly believe that the theme of class will come up in this year's GCSE exams. Therefore, guys, I want to show you how to craft the perfect grade nine response on this theme, okay? So that if it comes up in your actual exams, happy days because you know exactly how to answer it. And guys, before I dive into how to write this perfect response, remember that next week on Wednesday, I'll be running a one-off Inspector Calls GCSE Masterclass where I'll go over how to write a model response for uh, past paper questions and of course also key quotations for each character to so make sure you sign up. However, let's get to it. What if the theme of class comes up? Happy days because begin your essay and your discussion on this really central theme in this play with a thesis statement, okay? In your introduction, begin by talking about what is Priestley's message when it comes to the theme of class, which is a central theme within this play. Remember that this play is written as a morality play in which the Burlings and of course also the character of Gerald, they are all used to criticise the deep class divisions which existed in Edwardian England and this caused the deaths of Eva Smith and Daisy Renton. In fact, these deep class divisions from Priestley's perspective actually sowed the seeds of instability that led to the two world wars that happened. Remember that um, Priestley sets this play in 1912, just before the start of the First World War, which starts in 1914 to 1918. And then there's yet another war, right after which he releases this play. So the Second World War, 1939 to 1945. Priestley says, look, we're having all of this instability and this instability and more wars will happen unless society changes and becomes more equal, unless people who are part of the working classes are treated fairly and humanely. Make that very clear in your thesis statement, in your essay, in your grade nine essay on class, should it come up in this year's GCSEs. After you've done that in your introduction, this is gonna be the first point, okay? Your first point should focus on the characters of Mr. Burling and Gerald Croft. They are remorseless. They refuse to change. And remember that Priestley uses them as capitalist symbols. In fact, he uses them to illustrate that it was characters, businessmen like Gerald or uh, uh, Mr. Burling, aristocrats like Gerald Croft, they are the ones who not only upheld capitalism, but they also exploited and played a central role in exploiting poor working class women like Eva Smith and Daisy Renton. Remember that Mr. Burling dehumanizes Eva and this quotation, he says it's his duty to keep labor costs down. You wanna use this quote because the word labor, okay? This noun dehumanizes Eva and it illustrates how many businessmen during this period saw working class people simply as labor. But equally remember that Gerald Croft sexually exploits Daisy Renton, okay? And he specifically says how he loved how much power he had as an aristocrat over this poor working class prostitute because he said, you know, he became the most important person in her life. This hyperbole illustrates the disproportionate power that upper class society had over working class people. And of course, even towards the end, once Gerald finds out that the inspector isn't real, he's really, really happy he can protect his reputation. And when Eric and Sheila say, look, we still hurt somebody, we hurt a girl, he says, what girl? We can see that he is absolutely remorseless, as is Mr. Burling by the end. Now, when you're talking about this and illustrating how they are powerful symbols of capitalism, which Priestley was criticizing because he wants to promote the message and the idea that England should move towards a more socialist system which will promote equality. 
The context point that you want to make is that this play, and use this phrasing, this play is intended as a political diatribe, which means a forceful and bitter attack against the capitalist system that existed in the Edwardian era. Remember that Priestley believed contextually that equality was only possible through socialism and it's even really significant guys to remember that this play once it was um, released was actually first performed in Russia in Moscow. Why is this significant in 1945? This is significant because Russia at the time was known as the USSR. It was a communist country. It was actually the first communist country in the world and Priestley had the first uh, play that was staged performed in Moscow before England. Okay, so it's a very, very clear socialist message that he wants to send and you want to make that clear in your essay about class. Your second paragraph, in contrast to the first where you have these two characters, Mr. Belling and, and Gerald, who don't want to see change, they don't want any class equality, you want to contrast and juxtapose them with Sheila and Eric, okay? Remember that not only are they used to highlight just how selfish and callous, right? So they were selfish, they were cruel, they were a bit callous towards Eva Smith and Daisy Renton, okay? So they highlight obviously the selfishness of young people in upper middle class society at the time. However, um, you know, and of course, of course, when you're mentioning how selfish they were, you want to give examples, right? Mention the fact that obviously Sheila had Eva fired from her job in Millwoods and Eric raped Daisy Smith, okay? So, or rather Daisy Renton. However, the inspector highlights the cruelty. He highlights the role that they played in the suicides of Eva Smith and Daisy Renton. And they become remorseful. They recognize the power that they have as part of the younger generation who are upper middle class, okay? So they do have power, right? And they recognize this power as part of the younger generation and they commit to change. Now, you want to juxtapose how they are at the beginning versus the end. And these are the quotations to use to illustrate this, okay? And this commitment that they have towards social class equality. With Sheila's character, you want to obviously talk about firstly how she was really jealous of Eva Smith because she says she was pretty too. However, at the end, by act three, she says, and she admits, I started it, okay? This shows that she's taking social responsibility and she's seeing it as a duty to help working class women who were disempowered. For Eric's part, you want to talk about how at first he admits that he did rape Daisy. He says, you know, I didn't even remember, that's the hellish thing. However, by the end, he tells and criticizes his entire family who are really happy that, you know, the inspector isn't real and he says, you lot may be letting yourselves out nicely, but I can't, okay? Here we can see, and with this paragraph, you want to talk about how Priestley uses the theme of age. Remember that the theme of age is used by Priestley to demonstrate how he deeply believed that the younger generation would drive class equality, that would push for social change for Britain to become more socialist. Priestley didn't believe that uh, older generation had that ability. They were too rigid and too set in their ways and they had too much to lose to see any um, form of class equality. That's your second paragraph to do with the theme of class. And of course, finish off your perfect third paragraph by talking about the character of Inspector Gore. He's really important, okay? Because what you want to mention with Inspector Gore's character is that he is Priestley's mouthpiece, okay? He is the one that vocalizes what Priestley wants to directly say, not only to the Belling family, not only to Gerald, but to us as the audience, okay? Now remember that. Inspector Gore is used by Priestley to hold a mirror up to the characters, right? So Inspector Gore comes in, he holds a mirror up to all of the Burlings as well as Gerald to make them realize the class prejudices against working class people. However, Inspector Gore also holds a mirror up to us as the audience, right? We are also forced to reflect on our treatment of people who are poorer than us, who are weaker than us, and we are meant to feel very uncomfortable when we do so, okay? So remember that we are meant to also reflect on our actions against the working classes, and Inspector Gore is used as a supernatural character, okay? So he's obviously a ghostly character, and he is um, he leaves a very frightening message of revolt. The play doesn't end with, you know, this really nice feel-good message from Inspector Gore, like, oh, you know, um, make sure you treat these people really nicely. Please, please, please be nice to the Eva Smiths and John Smiths of the world. It doesn't end with a feel-good message. It ends with a dark, ominous message of revolt and instability. In fact, in spectacle before he leaves, he says that if the Burlings don't change, they will face fire and blood and anguish, okay? So this rule of three is really powerful. What this is illustrating is society faces more instability if class equality doesn't happen. If people do not change their ways in the way they treat the working classes, but more importantly, 
if wider society doesn't shift from being really capitalist to becoming more socialist. And this, you want to tie it to a contextual observation of the fact that this play was written to highlight the two world wars, okay? So of course the play was set in 1912, just before the start of the first world war, which is in 1914 to 1918. But equally, Precy himself wrote the play and had it staged in 1945 at the end of the second world war, which had started in 1939 and ended in 1945, okay? So I hope that helps. When it comes to knowing and seeing how to write a really powerful essay on the theme of class. And as I said next week, guys, myself and Mr. Sallis will be uh, releasing a series of prediction videos. And one of my predictions, of course, is the theme of class and in spectacles, okay? So keep an eye out for that video so that you can see why I believe strongly that the theme of class is going to be one of the questions that comes up in this year's Inspectacles exam. Thanks so much guys for listening.